Okay, here I have a question that's been asked for me to answer from January 2017, M1 paper, International A level, question number three. It's about resultant forces. There's two forces, P and Q, act on a particle at O. The force P has a magnitude 6 newtons and force Q has a magnitude 7 newtons. The angle between the line of action of P and Q is 120 as shown in this diagram. The resultant of P and Q is R. Find first the magnitude of R and secondly find the angle between um, the line of action of R and the line of action of P. So the resultant force is obviously going to be somewhere between these two. Somewhere like this. That's going to be your R. That's the resultant force. Okay, so your R is going to be somewhere like this. Now, we need to find that R. Now, there's lots of ways to do it. So let's just... I'm just going to... have got that diagram replicated over here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a triangle of forces. Now, if there's only two forces involved, this is probably the easiest way of dealing with this question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my force P. You see, it's going in this direction. It's this magnitude, 6 newtons. And then I'm going to draw... Where P ends, I'm going to draw Q. Now Q starts, it's like 7 newtons going in this kind of direction here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a bit longer than the first one because it's, uh, I mean, it's not to scale, but just to give an idea. All right, so that's P and that's Q. So there, there's the force P, okay, and there's the force Q. Now, the R is the resultant, so the resultant will be where, when you join from where you started up to where it ends. It's like a vector diagram. Okay, that's going to be the resultant R. This is going to be R. Okay, so what we can do here is we can use this triangle to find the, the value of R and also the angle between R and P, which will be this angle over here. But first of all, we've got to know one of these angles in this triangle and we can find an angle in the triangle quite easily seeing as if we continue this line along okay if we just continue that line along let's just make it a bit we know that that's the same as the angle this 120 is an angle between the 7 and the 6 and if you continue this line this is 120 so we know that this angle must be 60 degrees to add up to 180 so now we have a case where we have two sides and the angle between the two sides and we've got to find the third side so it's a classic case of using the cosine rule so we can say that um, R squared, or R, is equal to the square root of, just do it in one step, 6 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 6 times 7 times cosine of 60 degrees. Okay, so that's like using the cosine rule, just in case I've jumped the gun here for some of you. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine a. That's the cosine rule, which is in your formula book, in fact. So if you want to find a side, and you know two of the other sides, and the angle between the two, the two sides, and you'll find the side opposite that angle, you can use the cosine rule. Okay, so it's A squared is the side you're trying to find. So A is, A is what you're trying to find. B and C are the two sides that you know, and the angle A is the angle between those two sides. So if I plug this into my calculator, it should give me my answer. Let's see. So I'm going to put the square root of 6 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 6 times 7 times the cosine of 60 degrees. That gives you the square root of 43. Square root of 43 newtons, which you can also, if you wish, write it to 3SF. 6.5574, 6.5574. Five five seven four, which gives you 6.56 newtons. Because G is not involved, you should really put it to 3SF, although this is perfectly fine, either of these two answer, but 2SF should only be used when you've got G involved. Um, okay, so does it say anything, magnitude of R, find, and say anything about exact values, or no, okay, it didn't tell us any rounding to do, so you could leave it in its exact value, root 43N, Newtons or 6.56 Newtons. Now part, that's part one. 
Now part two, we can use that same diagram because what we need to find for part two is basically the angle between the line of action of R and the line of action of P. So basically what they're looking for is this angle over here. Let me call this angle X. And we can use, because we know this, this side now, we can use the sine rule. That's a pair of opposites, that's a pair of opposites. We can find what we need using the sine rule. So let's just do that. Let's use the sine rule here. Oops. Okay, so using the sine rule, we can say that the sine of the angle that we're trying to find over the side that's opposite the angle, which is 7, is equal to the sine of 60 degrees, which we have been given, divided by the, the length of the side opposite, which is in exact form root 43. Best to use the exact form in your calculations. So we can say that that, that means that the sine of x will be given by 7 times sine 60 divided by the square root of 43. So therefore x will be, and then we can work out the answer. So we've got to use the sine rule here. So we got 7 times sine 60 divided by the square root of 43. And we're going to find inverse sine of the answer. And that gives us 67.589, 67 67.589, which we should round to one decimal place as it's not mentioned. That's going to be 67.6, 67.6 degrees. It doesn't say to the nearest degree or it doesn't say to 3SF. It says, okay, so best to write it to one decimal place for an angle. And there we have our two answers. Okay, 6.56 and 67.6 degrees. This could also be written as this answer if you wish, no problem. It's not specified. Okay, so those are basically our this or you can write this or that. And here you can write this as your answer. And there we have question number three from January 2017 answered. Um, by the way, before I close up here, let me just um, mention something important. Um, it is possible for us to do this in another way, and if there were more than two other forces involved, then maybe you wouldn't be able to use a triangle. Okay, so let me show you how to do this using another method by resolving the forces. So what we can say is, Let's look at the resultant force, okay, resolved horizontally. So we can say the resultant force resolved horizontally, okay, um, is going to be the horizontal, we can say is equal to, let's resolve these forces horizontally. You've got, let's take to the right as positive. We can say that you've got 6 minus, and then you're going to have, let me just draw this line across from here. Let me draw this line across from here so I can do horizontal and vertical. So I'm resolving the forces horizontally and vertically. Okay, so I know that this angle here is 60 degrees. Okay. And I know that this angle here is 30 degrees. Okay, so basically I got 6 minus, in fact let me just, uh, that's right, 6 minus, and then for this, for this force to resolve horizontally, it's going to be 7 times, you can either say sine of 60 or you can say cosine of, sorry, sine of 30 or cosine of 60. I'll just say sine of 30. Okay, because you're going away from the 30, so it's going to be Q 7 times, the sine of 30. That's the horizontal component of this force, which is going to be 6 minus 7 th sine 30, which is 6 minus 3.5, because sine 30 is a half, which is going to be 2.5. Okay, that's the horizontal. Then you've got to look at the vertical, the vertical component of the forces. Okay, if we consider the vertical component, we're going to have basically just the Q. Um, the P won't have any effect. 
it's going to be basically seven times and you're going into the angle so it'd be seven times cosine of 30 which is going to be cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2 so it's seven times root 3 over 2 so then we can say okay we've got the horizontal force and this is we're going to if we take down as negative as positive sorry if we take up as positive this is going to be negative okay so we're going to end up with something that looks like this we're going to have 2.5 newtons in this direction 2.5 newtons in this direction and minus 7 root 3 over 2 in this direction okay that's the horizontal force and that's the um, vertical force okay so that's 7, point, 7 root 3 over 2 and we need to find the resultant of those those two okay if I draw this over here it's probably better it'll be more realistic in terms of the direction okay so the resultant of those two will be in this direction here okay in fact this is probably going to be longer let me see 7 root 3 over 2 7 times root 3 divided whoops divided by 2 gives us yeah this is actually much longer so it's be more realistic if I draw this line longer okay so we see that the resultant is going to be this over here okay so the resultant is going to be this over here so we can here just use Pythagoras we can say r is equal to the square root of 2.5 squared plus 7 root 3 over 2 squared and we'll get our answer so we can say um, this was the answer that we had so we're going to square this and add to it 2.5 squared and then find C square root of 43 so R is equal to the square root of 43 okay, we get the same answer as before and we want to find this angle here so we can say tangent of X equals 7 root, th 7 root 3 over 2 divided by 2.5 7 root 3 over 2 divided by 2.5 Okay, so we're going to have inverse tan, we have uh, 7, so we can say 3.5 root 3, 3.5 times root 3, divided by 2.5, close bracket equals, we get the same answer, x equals 67.589, so x equals 67.6. So we get the same answers of course, but two different ways of doing it. Now this way, I wouldn't use this way. Um, when I have just two forces acting because it's much easier to just do it the way I did it on the other side that's what I feel anyway just using the, the, the cosine rule and then the sine rule straight away okay but if you had another force acting okay supposing there was another force acting up here then what you do is you just however many forces you have you just resolve them horizontally and vertically um, to give you your horizontal component of R and your vertical component of R and then you find you know what R is actually by uh, you know by basically finding the resultant of the horizontal and vertical component of R and that will give you the actual R so when there's more than two forces then you kind of forced to use this method when there's only two forces then using the sine rule and cosine rule is generally easier okay